Justine wants to attend graduate school at the University of Texas, but fears she will not meet the minimum requirements. Scores for the GRE are normally distributed with a mean of uh, 1,046 with a standard deviation of 270. Justine heard a rumor that only that University of Texas only accepts students who are in the top um, 10%, score in the top 10% for their GRE. So we know that 10%, right, converts to a decimal of 0.10, 0.10. Okay, so what she's looking at, right, if we have the, the normal distribution, right, and we have the, the mu here, and the mu is um, 1046. She's saying that University of Texas only accepts students that score in this top 10% here. Okay, well then, what does that mean for percentile or for probability, right? So 10%, again, equals 0.10 if you convert the percentage into a decimal. So, um, again, this is the, the tail part of the distribution, and this is the body, right? Because the body is really big, um, but the tail is super tiny. So we're concerned about this area right here, because she wants to know um, what kind of score do I have to have to be accepted into, um, or to, be, to qualify to be in this top 10%, right? Okay, so let's go over here into our Z table, our unit normal table, right? And um, we're going to look at the tail, right, because we decided that 10% is smaller than 90, so it qualifies as the tail. We're going to find 0.1 in the tail. So again, um, C is where tail is, and again, we have two um, columns here for C. So we go up here and go, okay, no, that's still too big. Um, okay, we're getting a little bit closer. Um, point 0.1. Okay, so point 0.1, the closest one we have um, is here, point 0.1003, right? We wouldn't go with this one because this one is um, point 0.0015 away from point 0.1000, and this one is point 0.020 away, but this one's only 0 0.0003 away from 0 0.1000, okay? And so um, if we get look at 0.1 in the um, C, the, the tail, right, because we're looking at the 10%, the top 10%, um, that gives us a Z score of 1.28, okay? So that gives us a Z of 1.28. So um, let's get rid of this. We can actually do our calculations now. Okay, so um, our Z formula, right, if we were trying to find Z, would be uh, mu, or sorry, um, let's go ahead, let's go, um, X minus mu divided by standard deviation. But we don't, we already have Z. We're trying to find the raw score, right? So to do the raw score, we need to get um, X equals mu plus standard deviation times Z. Okay, so um, again, we're trying to find this raw score that she needs to get that would qualify to her to be in the top 10%. So we know the mu, right? The mu is um, 1046. And we know the standard deviation too, so 270. And we also know the Z score, right? Because we know that top 10%, point 0.1 in the tail, correlates with or represents with or corresponds to a Z score of 1.28. Right? So we're going to multiply that. So we have 10 point, or, uh, 1,046 plus 270, the standard deviation, times Z of 1.28. Okay? So we have um, 1046 um, plus 345.6. Right? So we have a raw score that she needs to get at least a minimum of 1391.6. Okay, again, and, and the way I found that Z right here, right, was I just looked at this 10% um, and I converted it into 0.1, because again, 10% as a percentage um, is 0 0.10 as a decimal, and I know that she wants to be in the top 10%, and um, so I just uh, did 1.28 because that correlated with the, the Z score for um, anything in the tail of 0 0.10. Okay, so this was top 10%. But what if she wanted to be in the top 5%? What would that look like, right? So now we still have a normal distribution and the mean score was 1046. But now we're looking for like the top 5% or 
5% right, equals 0 0.05. So same thing, get out your Z table. Now, instead of looking at 0.1 in the C column or in the tail, you're going to look at 0 0.05 in the C column or the, T or the tail column. Now, this one's a little bit different, right? Because if you look at 0 0.05, you have two options. You have 0 0.0505 and you have 0 0.0495. So what I was taught, you can go with either one, but I was taught to split the difference. So I wouldn't go with 1.64 or 1.65. I would go with 1.645, so I would split that, that difference. I'd still use this formula, right? X equals mu plus standard deviation times that z-score. Because again, we're looking, now we're looking for the score that would qualify her to be in the top 5% of people that took the test. So same um, mean here and same standard deviation, right? But now the z-score is going to be um, positive, right? 1.645. Okay, so I just go through and I go, um, we'll just go 270 times 1.645 first, right? So 1046 plus 444.15, and now I add the 1046 back to the mean. So she needs a raw score of at least 1,490 to get accepted. Um, to uh, this University of Texas if they only took the top 5% of the applicants. Okay, so the top one again was the top 10%, and then this one here is the um, top 5%, right? Now, if you're looking for the bottom, you would just make that z-score a negative. So in essence, you would be minusing it from the mean. But again, for this example, we're trying to find the top 10% or the top 5% um, that cutoff score. Okay, so in preparation of her applying, Justine recently took a practice GRE test and scored a total of 1,100. What is Justine's percentile rank? So anytime we talk about percentile ranks, think about how many people <clears throat> did you beat, right? So if I say you're in the 80th percentile, that means you beat 80% of the people that took that test or that assessment, but that also 20% of people beat you, all right? So what we're trying to find out is what percentage of the population did she beat? we're trying to find out her percentile rank. So again, here we have the unit normal um, table, and we have um, the different uh, probabilities. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to find her, her z-score. And again, z equals x minus mu divided by standard deviation. So for her case, it's 1,100, right, minus the average score of 1,046, divided by the standard deviation of 270. Okay, okay, and so that gives me a z-score of 0.237. Okay, so I look at my standard, or my, uh, yeah, my unit normal table, and I find 0.237 in my um, thing here, so it's closer to 0.24, so we'll go with that. So 0.24 gives me a proportion in, in the body of 0.5948, and portion of the tail of 0 0.4052. So you ask, okay, which one do we use? Okay, so let's draw it out. So here's our, our normal distribution with a mu of 10 or 1046, and she scored slightly above, right? She scored that 1100, right? So this is her. So again, the percentile rank is we're trying to find out what percentage of people did she beat? And what percentage of people scored lower than she did? Okay, now as you can tell, this side on the right-hand side is the tail, right? It's a big tail, but it's still smaller than the left-hand side because it crosses that mean, right? So this is the body, and the blue there is the tail, okay? So then, um, again, with percentile ranks, you want to find out what percentage of people did she beat? Well, that would be on the left-hand side then, right? Because scores that fell over here are like below the mean. So this might be like 1,000 and 950 and, and 900, right? But she's way over here on this side with the mean being right here. The mean is 1046 and she scored 1,100. So she's above the mean. So she should at least beat more than 50%. Right, so go back to your unit normal table, and we have, we're going to go with 0.24, right, because that's closer to 0.237 because we're going to round up. So we're going to look at the body, right? So um, the proportion is um, 
four, eight. And then to convert that to a percentage or percentile rank, we would say she's she beat 59.48% um, of people, or she's in the 59th percentile. Okay. In case Justine cannot get accepted to University of Texas, she's also inter interested in applying to UND. At UND, the program she's interested in, typically accepts students who score within the range of 75% and 95% on their GRE. Okay, these are percentile ranks. If this is true, what are the boundaries for the range of scores needed for her to be accepted? Okay, so let's do the first one, the lower end. So for this case, we're going to look for two um, raw scores. Because again, we're looking for the lower limit, like the, the, the lowest score she can really kind of get and still get into the school, and that upper limit, that ceiling that they're really kind of looking for. They're looking for that range of scores. Okay, so again, we'll, we'll do the lower one first, the 75%. And 75% converts to 0 0.75 when we talk about um, decimals, right? So we find, um, now this one we're going to look in the B column of the unit normal table. And the reason we're looking in the B column is because 75% is greater than 50. So we're looking in the body of the proportion. Okay, So we have here um, 0.75. So let's find, OK, so right around, right around here. And this one is a little bit closer. 0.7517 gives me a, um, a z-score of 0.68. Okay, so we'll go 0.68 for the lower limit, and let's find the upper limit. So again, we're going to go with, um, again, the, the body, because we're looking for um, something bigger than 50%. All right, if it was lower than 50%, we'd be looking in the tail. But since we're looking in um, the 95th percentile, right, how many people did she beat? Well, um, we're looking for, like, well, she beat 95% of the people, right, I mean, the body. So let's go for 95%. Um, all right, okay, so we'll go, um, well, we could go either way in between here, right? We'll go with the larger one, because I think we split the difference last time, so we'll go larger. So 0 0.9505 gives me a z-score of 1.65. So I'm going to write that in, um, 1.65 for my z there. Okay, now um, let's go ahead and get rid of, of these. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah. So let's get rid of this one and we'll get rid of um, this one, okay? So let's do the first one, right? So we'll do the 0.75, which gave me a z-score of 0.68, okay? So we're, again, we're looking for a raw score, so we're gonna use this formula, um, the x equals mu plus standard deviation times whatever that z-score is. Okay, and so we're still using the same uh, statistics, right? So we're going to have 1046 as our um, mean, right, as our mu, and 270 as our standard deviation. Okay, so we have 1046 plus 270. Now, in this case, um, we're going to multiply it by times 0.68. Okay, and that's going to give me a raw score of um, 1,230. So that's like the lower limit, right? That's like kind of the lowest one that she can score. Now let's do the, the upper limit. So again, we're still going to use this x equals mu um, plus standard deviation times whatever that z-score is, right? So 1046 for the mu, and then standard deviation of 270. But now for this z-score, I'm going to use 1.65. Right, which again gives me a um, a raw score of fourteen ninety um, two. Okay, so the range of scores. So Justine needs to score between um, twelve twelve thirty, right, um, and uh, fourteen ninety two. That's really the the range that this um, other school is looking for. So as long as she scores between 1230 and 1492, right, somewhere in this region, she's okay. She'll be accepted. Justine's friend scored 1015 on the practice GRE. 
what is this person's percentile rank? So the first thing we need to do is draw it out. Okay, so we still have mu of um, 1046, right? Is right about there, right in the middle. And um, this person's score is 1015, so it's below the mean. So anytime we talk about with a percentile rank again, right? Think percentile rank. Think how many people did this person beat? Okay, so that right there should tell me that we're looking in the tail, right? It's a pretty big tail, right? It's all this, but it's below the mean. And the body, see how the body crosses the, um, the mean line, right? Is all of this, which is bigger, right? Just barely bigger, but it's bigger. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find this person's z-score. So again, z equals x minus mu divided by standard deviation. So this person scored 10, 15, right, minus 10, 46. So we know we're going to get a negative number, right, because it's going to be below the mean. Divided by 270, we still have that standard deviation of, of 270. I'm still keeping all the same data. Okay, so this gives us a z-score, all right of 0.115, and we'll just round up to 0.12, okay? So look at your unit normal table, and go down to 0.12 in the Z column, and find out what proportion that correlates to in the tail, okay? So 0.12, right about there, and that gives me in the tail 0.4522, okay? So the proportion, is um, 0.4522. Or in percentile rank, so how many people did he beat? What percentage of the people did he this person beat? Well, they beat 45.22%, so this person's in the 45th percentile. Now, you notice I didn't go for the body, because again, percentile is um, like rank, like a ladder, like how many people did you climb up above, right? How many people did you beat? Since this person's score is below the mean, then we'd have to look in the tail because they didn't beat more than half the people. They only beat this much of the population, right? Whereas this much the population beat them, right? So percentile for this one would be in the tail, 45.2. Now, if their score was above the mean, say their score was 1,160, just barely above the mean, we would then look in the um, body, right? Because then we're looking at, um, you know, what percentage of people did they beat? It would be closer to like 51 percentile or 52 percentile, something like that, no. okay? Okay, what proportion of the population scores is located between Justine and her friend's score? Okay, so we already know that the mean was 1,046 and the standard deviation was 270. And in the second problem and the fourth problem, we found out their z-scores respectively. So um, Justine's friend had a z-score of uh, negative 0.115 for their score of um, 1,015. And Justine had a z-score of positive 2 point, or 0.237 for her score of 1,110. So what we're trying to do now is we're trying to find out what is the proportion of scores located between Justine's score, right, and her friend's score. So we're looking for this section right here. What proportion, what proportion um, of scores fall in between that section? So we know there's these scores already, so let's go ahead and look up their, um, their proportions, right? So we're going to look in um, the A column and find 0.115, right? So 0.11, we'll go 0.112, kind of round up, right? So proportion um, is point, and then we're looking in the D because now we're going, um, you know, crossing the mean, um, 0 0.0478. Okay, so again, we're always going to use the D column. So we use D when you cross the mean, right? Or when you're asking a question and you have to cross that, that middle section right there, right? So since we're crossing um, <clears throat> that mean, we have to use uh, the D column, okay? So we get our proportion um, of point, uh, zero four seven eight for the first one. And let's go for the second one now. So point two three seven. find that Z. 
two, three, seven. Okay, it's over here. So we'll go two, three, or point two, four. We'll kind of round up, and that gives me in the um, in the D column point zero nine four eight. Okay, so proportion of point zero nine um, four eight. Okay, so the proportion in the D column, again going from Justine's friend score to the mean, gave us a proportion of 0 0.0478, um, or about 4.78% uh, of people had his score to the mean, and then from her score to the mean, so um, 1,110 um, to 1,046 was about 9.48%. Okay, so if I want to find the proportion of the scores located between her score, 1,110, and her friend's score of 1,015, I need to add those two um, proportions together. And so I'm going to get 0.1426 or 14.26%. So again, the, what proportion of the population scores is located between Justine's score right here, right, and her friend's score right here? And again, because we're crossing this mean, we're trying to find out this um, amount in between that, but we're crossing, mean, we have to use the D column, right, this last column here. Right. So again, A is your Z, right? If you're trying to find whatever the Z is, um, this B column is proportion in the body, right? And then the C column is proportion in the tail, and D is used whenever you cross the mean line.